So welcome back to the next video, which is Bosch KE Jetronic, the inside truth. Now I said I was going to get around to it, and I have. So there's a lot going on on the KE Jetronic versus the K Jetronic. Um, e, just think of it simple, electronic. There's more electrical stuff there and there, going towards modern ECUs like we see now. So I won't jabber too much. Let's zoom in, and I'll talk you through what happens with this system, where the fuel comes in, where the fuel goes, and how it differs from K Jetronic. So let's get cracking. KE Jetronic. So what's the basic difference? Well, these are aluminium and the other ones are cast iron. So the main difference for these KE Jetronic units is the control spring sits in the lower chamber under here where a K Jetronic sits in the top. Don't worry, it will zoom in a minute and I'll show you exactly what we're looking at. The next one is we have this big lump here. Now this is an external fuel pressure regulator. Now, normally on the K's, you have your internal fuel pressure. So fuel comes in, regulates pressure, fuel comes out. In this unit, fuel comes, this is your fuel feed pipe, comes in, into the chamber, fills up the upper chamber, comes back out, into the chamber, inside this. There's a valve and spring inside there, which is set, which you can adjust inside here, which I've looked in the other videos and I've showed you. Once that clicks at a set point, fuel comes out of here back to tank. Now this line across here, this is just a return from the distributor to there, which eventually goes back to tank. And we also have this little grey or black box. Now this is called a differential pressure regulator. Now what this does, it regulates the difference between lower chamber and upper chamber. It does it pretty simply but also it has inputs from, on this side you have a potentiometer which tells the ECU how high the air flap is. Don't worry, that's not set. And other inputs from different sensors on the engine, which means this either opens fully or closes fully or sits somewhere in the middle. So we zoomed in and now we can see a bit more detail on the springs. So you have a rubber diaphragm in these types and we have our, I'm going to call it a platelet. So that sits, there is a nozzle missing out of here because they're sprung steel and when they cut them in half, they don't work. So imagine there's a nozzle here which sits on top of this, send fuel out. So when this is in this position and sat there, no fuel that sits around here can get out this injector. Now, fuel plunger in the middle of the fuel body, same principle as K Jetronic. So the air plate moves up, uncovers the slits inside here and sends X amount of fuel into the chambers. And then the fuel goes in the chambers, that spring moves down. And as the spring moves down, you have a counteracting force on the bottom, this spring, which is your balancing spring. We'll come on to that in another video. As that goes down, obviously uncovers the injector and fuel comes out to the top. So, okay, you say fuel goes from the top, pushes that down, fuel goes out. Well, what's, what's the big deal? Why is it so different? DPR. Now, as I said, we've got a diaphragm which splits upper and lower chambers. Now, fuel, for example, if the DPR has got all the signals it wants, your foot's to the floor, it goes boom, there's all your fuel, off we go. How does that work? So, the fuel in the upper chamber, system pressure, which I say comes in here and it goes into one side of the DPR and sits on top of these plates. So, air plate moves up, fuel plunger moves up, sends fuel down to push down on there to send fuel out. But this DPR, imagine it as a dictated fuel leak between these two chambers. So fuel pressure comes in here and it's in one side of this. So if the DPR is fully open, no fuel can bypass through this, which means all fuel is sent out into these upper chambers, can push down that and send the fuel out. But if you've got something wrong with your car or it's not fully warmed up, and the DPR, for example, 
is fully closed. That means fuel can go through the DPR and into the lower chamber, pushing up on this spring. So our plunge is moved up, we're sending all the fuel out into here. Oh, it's moving down, sending fuel. But because it can go through the DPR, that pressure that sits up here bypasses through this and then pushes up on the bottom of this spring. So that is where your fuel control comes from. So, like I say, you're cruising down the road, you put your foot down, DPR's up, yep, yeah, all good, close. Fuel comes out, push down there, goes out the injector. You pull off the short slip road, come to set of lights. No, fuel system drags a bit of dirt into it. Something's not happy, it's really warm, your lamp has gone, something like that. Let's go green. Boom, stick your foot down. Oh, not happy. That's midway, midway. So all the fuel that comes out of here is not allowed to get out of the injector because it's bypassed and it's sent fuel underneath that to counteract the force you're trying to push down. So it comes across that cage electronic is very complex. Yes, it is. I say it's, it's not complex, it's back to front. It's a different ballpark, but it's simple. This is all mechanical. It's all mechanical inside there. There's no electrics inside here. It's still the same principle of, you know, fuel pressure comes in, it fills up all this lower chamber. That goes inside the body and sits inside the fuel plunger. Plate moves up, moves the plunger up, fuel disperses out to go to the injectors. All we've got is a counteracting force on the lower side of this. Again, we've gone through the DPR on other videos where you can set your system pressure and flow testing um, and bits and bobs. There are more videos coming out, but this gives us our basic overview of how it works. So in principle, it is the same. Fuel plunger out, fuel goes out. The main difference is we have now a counteracting force on the bottom, like I've said, relevant to what that DPR is doing. Now, literally, that's an electromagnet inside there. Current goes through under the plug. You've got you know, a baffle plate which either goes open or close and dictates how much force is put on the bottom of here. Ideally, you want little force on the bottom of there because you want to go fast. But this is also designed with emissions because when you put your foot down and you let your foot off, the car is just coasting. What does this do? This completely diverts it and shuts off. Obviously, there's no fuel pressure coming down there. This goes boom. Other way, any fuel pressure now goes on the bottom of there and momentarily completely shuts off fuel to all the injectors and that massively helps with the emissions because the engine's coasting and it's using its engine brake and it doesn't need any fuel so this deliberately shuts off any fuel pressure and here we go we have our side by side of our newer KE unit and the older K electronic now again just simple process you can see easier fuel pressure's coming in this side and it fills up these lower chambers in here and as the fuel, the arm moves up, that pushes that pin up, which uncovers these slots, sends system pressure from here through these slots into these chambers up, straight out of the injector. Whereas this still has your fuel going into the bottom chamber, fuel pin moves up, sends fuel out to the top, and all we have is that differential pressure regulator regulating, guess what? differential pressure between top and bottom to dictate how much fuel can be dispersed out the injector and obviously technology moves along we can see that we've got this lump here and we've got this with our external DPR and our potentiometer on the other side so there we have it that is our inside truth of the KE Jetronic now yeah it's a bit complex it's a bit um there's a lot more going on um but like I say, it's pretty simple. They're all very simple in their operation. Now, while they're apart, going back to my last video, or one of the other videos of hot starts and the injectors. So, the vapor lock situation which causes hot starts on the Merck injectors on a 16 valve engine, or any, I'm going to say any cast iron unit. So, your vapor lock, your fuel, fuel's in here and fuel goes back to the tank. Your vapor lock is inside here. So, fuel comes to the tank, boom, it can't push it out because it's vapor lock it just com it compresses that vapour. Switched fire to this side, fuel pressure comes in and goes straight back out and this regulates your fuel pressure. So that vapour lock is pushed out the metering head, 
and it's inside here because it's got a clear path to push it out because it regulates the system pressure in here where the system pressure regulator in this one is internal and it hasn't got that space to get fuel past the system pressure regulator in the K units to let fuel out where this side there's no there's nothing inside here which can hinder fuel flow in regards to a vapor lock because the fuel comes in it goes straight out this does all its stuff but when the vapor locks around here and it's doing its problems fuel's already here fuel's already coming out the injectors are already happy so that just shows two differences as well why the Merck injectors um, do not work with I'm going to say any cast iron unit yes they do work I've had people say yeah they've had them for years but you know from looking at the technical side of it and proving it on two two different cars it, it it's blatantly clear that the Bosch um, Mercedes brass injector is designed to work with this because it can have a higher opener pressure because there's no issue of a vapour lock inside these where like I say the cast iron units the vapour lock's inside and it can't open the fuel pressure regulator to get the fuel through so there we go so thanks for watching thanks for sticking by me um, I know it's been a while I'll said I'll get it out just to reiterate it's basic fuel plunge comes up fuel goes in pushes that down differential pressure regulator dictates what pressure is on the bottom which dictates how much fuel's coming out. Pretty simple. Now, balance and these are very hard to balance because they have to be unscrewed a different way and where my screwdriver is there, that's where they are. They're not on the top in here, like the K units. They're underneath. So you've got all this on your car. You need to balance it if you're doing it in your car. You've got to unscrew this, move it all off, take the screws off, adjust them, put them back on, put them together. And also... You can adjust the K units with the caps off because the adjuster screw is sealed. So you can have the caps off and adjust it. On these, they sit down the bottom, there's no O-ring on it. So when you undo the caps off there, obviously fuel fuel's gonna come out, system pressure is gonna come out. Um, so you've got to adjust it, put it all back on, nip it up tight so it seals, put it back. It's it's a bit of a long-winded way of doing it, but again, I'll show you on the video of how we balance the K units. So cheers for watching again and I'll see you in the next one which should be this balance net or the exhaust most likely which is on the floor in pieces. So cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.